What's going on guys, it's Quizzy Dog here and today's video is just going to address a couple of comments that I've got in the past and it's whether or not there's a difference between the two quality presets on the Hisense U8G, U88G, U7G or U78G. So we're going to jump into how we did this test and what our findings were right after we pay these bills with a word from today's video sponsor. If you guys are looking for an affordable Windows 10 key, then you need to do yourselves a favor and check out VIPSCDKey.com. Using the link within the description below, as well as the coupon code GG20, you will have yourselves a brand new Microsoft Windows 10 Pro OEM CD key for as little as $15.82. What are you waiting for? Use that link within the video description and thank you VIPSCDKey for sponsoring today's video. Okay, so welcome back. And like I mentioned before, today we're gonna to be taking a look at whether or not there's a fundamental quality difference between the two new presets on the Hisense U8G, U88G, U7G, and U78G. And that would be either the picture optimization mode or the text optimization mode. And both of these modes really only affect the output for the 4K 120 Hertz option on this TV. And I should mention as well, because this comes up in a ton of videos, but specifically, and I name these sort of models every time I do one of these videos, but if you have one of these TVs from outside of North America, for the most part, as far as I know, unless you've imported in a North American model, right now your TV only has four onboard HDMI 2.0 ports. So if you're looking to get 4K 120 Hertz for either gaming or desktop applications, unfortunately international models to my knowledge can't do that. So I just wanted to address that before it comes up in the comments because this is something that comes up a lot. Now we did talk about this quality setting a little tiny bit in one of my last videos. I took a look at Fortnite on the Xbox Series X and to me there was really no difference in the text quality between the picture optimization in 4K 120Hz and the text optimization and I still stand by that. I did a couple more tests since then and I think it's just because overall this text is just a little bit different. It's engineered to look good in different chroma subsamplings, whether it be uh, chroma, let's say 422 or 420. But what I wanted to do, because so many people asked, is I wanted to test these out on a PC. So linked within the video description, I will have a link to my PC build video. But the main synopsis is this build focused on some sort of RTX 3000 GPU specifically so I could test things like 4K 120 Hertz. So we took the desktop, we dismantled it, we moved it over to the TV side of my office or the entertainment side. This is productivity, this is entertainment over here if you're wondering why my hands are going crazy. But we took that over there and we ran some tests. And with those tests we found that in a Windows setting or a computer oriented setting, there's actually some massive differences. So we set this up in the NVIDIA control panel for 3840 by 2160 at 120 Hertz using Chroma subsampling RGB. That's gonna give us the cleanest best case scenario, if you will, when it comes to testing the quality of output and input on this TV. Now, what I did as well, because text is the main thing, of course, it says text optimization. So I grabbed a 4K screenshot of some text and we're gonna take a look at some settings or some picture story that I took with a macro lens. And you guys can see in these reference images that there's actually quite a big difference. Now, the first thing we're gonna take a look at, of course, would be the picture optimization setting, mainly because I think this is where people are going to leave this TV primarily for entertainment purposes. Now, what you're going to notice is this text is overall fairly soft and it looks like there's even pixels missing. And I think this goes back to the previous concerns that we had with older softwares on the Hisense TV, where we are getting 3840, but that's 3840 by either 1080p or 1440p. It seems like there's a loss in vertical quality again, and we can see that with these close-ups of text. Now, in contrast, if we look at the text optimization, we can see that everything is crystal clear. And this makes the 120 hertz look identical to the 60 hertz, because of course, the 120 was the only thing that was impacted 
with this text issue. Now we can see that there's actually gaps filled in, if you will, pixel wise, based on where they were missing in the previous slide. So where we actually had the picture optimization, now when we look at the text optimization, we can see overall it looks a lot better. Now, another thing that I wanted to test was whether or not just general desktop applications looked right. So I took a look at my Adobe Lightroom, I believe it was, icon, and this is at 100% window scaling. And we can see again in a macro shot just how soft the text is as well as the picture overall. And when we switch it back to the text optimization, everything looks as it should. And in fact, in person, it is a little bit sharper as well. It's just really hard to take macro shots of the TV screen because if you get too close, you end up getting lost in the pixels and too far away, you can't notice a big, big difference. So hopefully this translates properly for you guys on your devices. Now, interesting enough, another thing that I noticed is the text optimization pictures are actually a lot brighter. So I went in and I checked the full array local dimming. It's set to medium at 100%. This is in game mode as well, because that's truly where you're going to use this most often if you're using it as a desktop monitor, because game mode will have the best variance of uh, input lag as far as keeping that low for mouse movements and gaming. And we can see on the text optimization, it's a lot brighter. And when we switch back to the picture optimization, it's a lot dimmer with these same settings. And I don't really understand why. I don't know again if that has anything to do with the vertical resolution concerns because I think that's what's going on with the text and the picture overall. But it's interesting that this is so perceivable in a desktop application. And again, I believe it's just due to that Chroma subsampling. It's sending the information through in the highest quality it can. So you're not noticing a quality bump or loss in let's say subsampling 420 or 422 as much as you would on a desktop application with Chroma 444 or RGB. Now I took a video as well and I've racked back and forth here so you guys can see to the eye other than just a still. And by the way, the camera was kept at the same settings this entire time as far as ISO, white balance, all of that stuff. I have nothing on auto just to make sure that we can see what the differences are without any sort of automatic adjustments from the camera itself. Uh, but in this video, you're gonna notice again, you can see that stark difference in brightness when we go from the picture optimization mode where it's a little softer at 100% scaling and move ourselves over to that text optimization. That's where it kind of pops, it brightens up, all of that stuff. And it's just, it's quite bizarre. So if you guys are looking to use this panel specifically for a desktop, the nice thing is the software update beta version M0414, live release coming soon of M0422, it will have these two optimization settings. And these two settings only pertain to 120 hertz. There's no issues at all. And there wasn't even issues at launch with the 4K60. So that's always been perfectly fine. Um, I haven't seen any other differences as far as like input latency with my mouse movements. I didn't notice any loss in quality in HDR. What's up guys, it's Crazy Dog here. And it turns out in post-processing, now that these files are off of the viewfinder of this camera and actually on my PC, it appears that there is quite a difference with the HDR output in the text optimization. Now, it appears as if all they did was took the results they achieved with the M0210 with the 3840 by 2160 resolution when it impacted itself with the poor HDR output and they put that into its own setting and then with the picture optimization, I don't know what they've done. The HDR looks great. And again, it looks fine in like Chroma 420 and 422 output, but it appears that it's suffering, of course, from that same issue that they had previously with the L series update with the vertical resolution issue. So 
Band-Aid fix at best, I think, but when I said previously, based on what I saw in the viewfinder of the camera, that there wasn't a big difference with the HDR output, it looks like, again, HDR is quite dull with the text optimization compared to in the picture optimization, which to me personally, it's not a make or break because at the end of the day, if you're using the text optimization specifically on your PC, you can usually counteract and combat this by addressing the HDR output within your GPU settings to bump that up to the point that you don't notice how dull it is. But I just wanted to pop on because I'm currently editing this piece of uh, content for you guys to let you know I messed up. And yes, there is a difference with the HDR output between these two settings. Back to the regular video. And that was one thing that the community has brought up is whether or not there was a loss in dull HDR when you put it over to the text optimization because we saw that with M0410 or M0210, sorry, is the vertical resolution was fixed, but HDR seemed to be kind of dulled out and almost cut in half when it came to saturation. On Windows, at least, with just regular Windows HDR, I don't really notice a difference. And my keyboards here, it's like literally wired into my desk. So on-screen keyboards suck to navigate with a mouse. So I didn't bother going onto like Netflix or anything on my desktop and testing that. Because at the end of the day, people that are using this as a monitor probably aren't doing that stuff for the most part. Usually you'll have another screen reserved for that. But uh, that's pretty much it for this video. I wanted to put it out because this is a question that I've been asked a couple of times. So if you have any questions in regards to things that I might be able to test on the Hisense U88G that I own, it's the U8G in the States, U70G or 78G and U7G, that's the little brother, exact same panel, just 90 full array local dimming zones instead of the 360. So most of what I say about the U8 series pertains to the U7 as well, because fundamentally, other than the local dimming zones, that is the exact same TV in my opinion. Uh, but if you like this video, of course, leave a like. If you think this is going to benefit the online creator community, um, definitely throw this video on your favorite forum as well. I didn't realize that people have been posting these to Reddit, so I think that's kind of cool. 40% of last video's traffic actually came from online AV forums. So if you think that it's worth sharing there, if somebody happens to have these questions, go ahead and do that. But my ramble is over. Until my next video, my name is Crazy Dog. You guys have been awesome, and we'll catch you all in my next one. Take care.